Oh, hey, Vats and Pilots. So this tutorial is just a very brief tutorial regarding the new RNAV uh, departure procedures out of Toronto Pearson Airport. So first of all, what is RNAV? RNAV stands for Area Navigation, and the R and the NAV come from uh, Area Navigation. And basically, RNAV is just a way of providing more waypoints within the airspace uh, than the traditional VOR to VOR or NDB uh, navigation. So that's uh, that's basically all it is. So um, before we kind of get into the procedures at Toronto, uh, which are a little different than what you normally see, I'm um, just showing you here a chart from Frankfurt. And you can see that at Frankfurt, uh, the RNAV departure uh, has waypoints that start right at the end of the runway. And uh, you just put your uh, FMC on to uh, LNAV and VNAV and it just follows along the path and there are no issues whatsoever. It's very straightforward. Here's an RNAV SID for Atlanta and you basically see the same thing. Depart your runway, uh, in this case the, on the bottom runway at a heading of 95 and you essentially use your LNAV and VNAV on your FMS to follow the path. In Toronto, it's a little different, mostly for noise abatement reasons, but also to assist the departure controller in spacing aircraft. So you will actually get a vector before you're able to turn to your first waypoint of your departure SID. Here's the chart for the dead key one departure. I'm going to use the example of runway 24 right because that's what we'll be flying today. So you're expected to f climb uh, on runway heading to 1,000 feet and then turn left to a heading of 235 degrees and uh, then expect a vector to the first waypoint of the departure SID. And you can see here at the bottom of the dead key chart that at, for every runway assignment it says expect radar vectors to the first waypoint in the RNAV SID. The biggest mistake that uh, controllers in Toronto Sea pilots make is heading directly to their first waypoint after the takeoff and not following the instructions on the departure SID. This is something you definitely do not want to do and uh, hopefully after seeing this video you'll understand what's required for the departure SID out of Toronto. So today we're going to be flying the uh, WestJet Flight 240, the PMDG 737. Toronto to Montreal. We're flying the Dead Key 1 departure and the Miglo transition. So just need to get a couple things off the chart. First thing is uh, we want to make sure we have the correct chart and uh, we want to first make sure and understand that our departure altitude is 5,000 feet. And the second thing is we want to just pay attention and make sure we clearly understand what we're supposed to do after departure, uh, which is heading 235 after 1,000 feet, and also that this is a jet SID. Um, if we're flying a prop, we have to pick a different SID. In this case, the bomb at one would make sense, and that's for props only. And remember, props have a uh, maximum altitude after departure of only 3,000 feet. A very common pilot error is turning immediately after departure on their way to their first waypoint in the departure SID. Okay, so I think what's happening is people are putting in their flight plan, in this case uh, CYYZ, CYUL, they're putting it in the uh, in the route and activating it. And uh, even if you assign a runway, in this case 24 right, um, you'll see that the uh, the flight management system has connected up the end of the runway to the first waypoint Savour. Now un unless you put in your actual departure procedure, in this case the dead key one, um, uh, essentially that uh, is not going to change and if you have LNAV engaged you will just turn right at the end of the runway and cause uh, all kinds of chaos for your departure controller. You have to select the proper procedure and you'll see as I do it here and execute um, the the join has disappeared and uh, on our legs page you can see that it's actually indicating that uh, hey there's a vector you should be expecting before your first waypoint of Savour. So I hope that helps. The best way to avoid the problem is to not press LNAV 
on your departure. Just have it on VNAV and uh, keep LNAV turned off and fly the heading. So here we are, we're just doing our uh, departure. Um, I actually have LNAV and VNAV turned completely off. I'm just hand flying. Um, runway heading of 237 to 1000 feet. Turn left very slightly to a heading of 235. We do that after a thousand feet. And here we go. And now we're waiting for the vector to our waypoint Savour. Now, the vector is going to come after 3,600 feet because that is the noise abatement uh, regulation where aircraft flying out of Toronto are not allowed to make a turn until they're above 3,000. 600 feet that's uh, for jet aircraft so once we pass 3600 feet we're going to expect our turn from the controller and we can also expect a higher altitude it'll either be uh, 7000 feet or flight level 230 depending on uh, inbound traffic into the uh, Toronto control area Westjet 420, turn left direct Savour on course, climb 7,000 feet. Okay, so there's the uh, the height, about 3,600 feet. We've been given our vector, and we turn left to Savour on course, and that's basically all there is. And one final piece of information, if you happen to be flying an aircraft that is not RNAV equipped, uh, an old uh, 727 or uh, DC-3 or something, uh, that's perfectly all right. Just advise the controller. They'll either assign you a non-RNAV departure or they will uh, give you radar vectors for your departure. But either way, we'll get you out and on course. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them on my YouTube channel or ask one of the controllers when you're flying online with Adson. Thank you.